stack in Armin, based on the proper Scottish Gaelic spelling, is a sea stack in the St Kilda archipelago. It is 196 metres tall, qualifying it as a Marilyn. It is the highest sea stack in Scotland and the British Isles. The name Stack and Armin means Stack of the Soldier Warrior, and evidence remains showing it was used by people living nearby as a hunting grounds. It is not believed to have been inhabited year-round, but has hosted some extended stays. Climbing the rocks was once done to collect eggs and has continued in the form of recreational sport. The island was once home to the now extinct Great Auk, and rules exist to protect the bird habitats and breeding grounds. Stack and Armin is 400 metres north of Bararian near the 172 metre high Stack Lee. Stack and Armin is separated from Bereri by a channel so littered with rocks that it should not be sailed, though sailors write passionately about the views. History and People The first written account of the island was Martin Martin's description in the early 18th century. Martin wrote about the island after the Scottish writer had visited St Kilda in 1697 and included a few anecdotes about the stack in his A Description of the Western Isles of Scotland published in 1703. It was the first comprehensive book on the archipelago, to which was appended a late voyage to St Kilda Martin calls the island Stack Narmin. It was never inhabited full-time, but hunting its bird population helped sustain the way of life of the population of St Kilda, as evidenced by the buildings they left behind. There are no fewer than 78 storage Clytean on Stack and Armin and a small bothy, built by the St Kildans Martin describes these Clytean as pyramids, and wrote they were used to preserve and dry birds, especially the Solan goose. Martin observed one harvest that brought in 800 birds. In addition to the geese, the islanders used stack and arm in for harvesting great auks, gannets, and puffins, as well as their eggs. The numerous birds that lived on the island were an important source of sustenance for the people of St Kilda. The longest recorded period anyone ever spent on the island was about nine months. Three men and eight boys from Herta were marooned here from about August 15, 1727 until May 13, 1728. As luck would have it, Herta suffered a smallpox outbreak while the eleven were on the stack, and thus the islanders were unable to man a boat and retrieve them until the next year. Such temporary accidental occupation of the island may have been a regular event, since Martin Martin also relates, in an anecdote in a description of the Western Islands of Scotland how a group of some twenty men were stranded on the island for a couple of days after the rope that held their boat broke. They survived by fishing, and communicated to their wives that they were alive and well by lighting as many fires on the top of an eminence as there were men in number. Martin adds, curiously, that the wives were so overjoyed that they managed to produce a record harvest of corn that year. The archipelago as a whole was evacuated in 1930, and bequeathed to the National Trust for Scotland in 1957. Hunting birds is no longer allowed, and the stack is visited only occasionally by scientists, journalists and climbers. The last great orc in the British Isles. On Stack and Armin, in July, 1840, the last great orc seen in the British Isles was caught and killed. A then 75-year-old inhabitant of St Kilda told Henry Evans, a frequent visitor to the archipelago, that he and his father-in-law with another man had caught a gare fowl, noticing its little wings and the large white spot on its head. They tied it up and kept it alive for three days, and then killed it by beating it with a stick, apparently because they believed it to be a witch. The last known specimens in the world were killed a few years later either in Eldi, Iceland, or off Newfoundland. Climbing the Stack Native St Kildans have climbed Stack and Armin and other cliffs in St Kilda for centuries in order to harvest birds and eggs. They climbed alpine style, barefoot or in thick socks, using ropes pleated of horsehair. Modern ascents are few. Some may have been done illegally. Mount Allendays.net has no routes, information, or comments. However, chatter among online groups suggests attempts are made. The summit of Stack and Armin was reached by a party of 11 Marilyn baggers on October 13, 2014. Prior to that, the only verifiable modern ascent happened in 1969, when a group which included Dick Valhory and John Morton Boyd made a number of ascents in the archipelago, 
which included climbing stack and arm in. Climbing stack and arm in, though attractive is complicated by a number of factors. The climb of stack and arm in itself is described as little easier than stack lee, but the topography makes it a major expedition, and the weather can make nonsense of any landing plans. The stack is accessible only with difficulty. More importantly, since the entire archipelago is both a national nature reserve and a world heritage site managed by Scottish Natural Heritage, climbing is strictly regulated since it potentially disturbs the natural and cultural heritage and particularly the rich bird life. According to the 2003 Management Plan, for natural heritage interests, natural processes will normally be allowed to continue without intervention. The 2003 management plan is quite specific about the dangers of climbing in St Kilda. The object of prescription 21.5 is to ensure that breeding seabirds are not disturbed by climbing on the cliffs, though the plan suggests the allowance of climbing the cliffs under strictly monitored circumstances. Prescription 26.4 states that a policy that satisfies climbers and does not violate the trust's mission is to be developed. The Trust's strict but preliminary position on climbing was formalized quite explicitly. Given the difficulty of the climbs, the lack of any rescue or medical facilities on St Kilda and the risk of disturbance to nesting bird on the cliffs, climbing on St Kilda is not permitted without the express permission of the Trust. This is stated formally under the St Kilda bylaws. As part of the process of implementing this management plan, the Trust will liaise with SNH and the Mountaineering Council of Scotland to review whether any change is merited to this position. The Mountaineering Council of Scotland, in a review of the plan, recommends that the NTS celebrate the historical importance and the cultural heritage of the climbing on the islands of St Kilda. See also, List of Outlying Islands of Scotland. References Bibliography, Horswell Smith, Hamish the Scottish Islands. Edinburgh, Canongate. ISBN 978-1-84195-454-7. Rackweets, Martin. Travels to Terra Incognita, The Scottish Highlands and Hebrides in Early Modern Travellers Accounts C1600-1800. Waxman Verlag, 2007. ISBN 978-3. 8309-1699-4. External links, St. Kilda Management Plan, Account of an Ascent of Stack and Armin.